but it is time for Shiny Side Out with Dave and Mecky. So I hope you have your tinfoil hat all made and cinched down tight over your ears. So take it away, Dave and Mecky. Welcome to Shiny Side Out with... Dave! <laughs> and Mackie. <laughs> That's funny. On WZZR, broadcasting from Australia for Revolution Radio on, you guessed it, www.revolution.radio. Where it's more than just radio, so jump into the chat room if you can. This is show number 379. It's on air, online, and on your smart device. So grab an app to listen anywhere or listen at home on a Grace Tabletop digital radio. Someone needs to tell them that we've been saying this every, every intro. If you miss Solaris's show, it was awesome yet again. She had Valerie Mahan on. And they were talking, well, according to the legend, the Tuatha de Manan is the topic today. My goodness me. Uh, if you don't know who Solaris is or why we keep mentioning her, she's the awesome host of the show that runs before ours. And if you don't know, you should know, because you should be listening to her show too. So, if you don't know how to, or you've maybe you're busy at the time before, then jump into the archives at freedomslips.com or revolution radio dot radio revolution dot radio oh i don't know what i'm doing today uh, it, look it only cost five dollars 95 that's australian too by the way so it would today, certainly today. be cheaper in with US dollars but anyway it is uh, a great place you get the archives of every host show all of their shows not just shiny side out but you get solaris blue raven show as well she always has awesome guests, and we thank her so much for her contributions. Um, Mackie and I live in Australia, and as such... Or do I, we? Or well, do we? we're just crisis actors, as, as you well know, <laughs> Mackie, right? Because uh, Australia doesn't exist, apparently. I love that. That's great. You know, moon landing, JFK, <laughs> Australia's fake. <laughs> Yeah, we're up there. We're up there in, in the, in the yeah, well, flat earth as well, you know, it's all there. But because of that, because we live in Australia, we have the greatest respect for the First Nation people, uh, the custodians of the land. And where I live, it's the Dark and Young people, and where Mekki lives, it's the... Daruk. People. people and we oh. pay our respects to elders not only past and present but also future because at some point if one of the elders listens to this we don't want to exclude them because you know the, fu the future and the present are actually exactly the same thing if you didn't know and let us remember that beneath our houses, all the concrete, the roads, everything we've constructed in since we've been around, there are lands which have had stories passed down for at least 240,000 generations. They're talking 80,000 years to 100,000 years now of population of Australia. And it could be longer. It's probably longer. Now, um, I'd, I'd like to say er hello to everybody who was or who attended my talk i did a i did a talk this week uh down in campbelltown at the arts building and it's a great venue by the way for those of you who know what i'm talking about and it was um for a group called ufo prsa it's like the tigra tigra lakes ufo group it's just another group that we have i didn't know there was more than one group uh, my mum and grandmother were members of the original Tiger Lakes UFO Society, they called it then. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I was invited to to speak to them. Um, and it was really good. Those, the, the people who attended were very, 
interested in the topic. They're regulars, apparently. And, um, yeah, just to look, thanks, thank you very much for listening. Awesome. A lot of people have already friended what's, what's, me. What, I had, I, I've, I've sold a bunch of books too, Mackie, by the way. Nice. Yeah, what, it's really good. What's the demographic, Dave? What's the demographic? The, yeah, the well, did you know, yeah, um, the curious. average age would probably be 30, 38 or thereabouts. There was some teens okay. and there was some people in... Uh, well, I, I'm only going to guess because I didn't ask, but there were maybe in their Ooh. 70s, mid-70s. Okay. So okay. in that range, it's pretty good. And the, yeah. the young cool. people were the most vocal. Everyone else were, uh, you know, would listen. And, and, a lot, uh, and during the break, everyone asked me questions. <laughs> everyone was all, all over it. So, uh, look, I was really pleased to be able to have the opportunity to do it. And thank you very much for, for that. And um, I'm happy to be called any time for another one. So thank you. Um, and, and that um, I have to also mention, uh, since I'm saying that, um, I'm going to be attending the uh, Cosmic uh, Consciousness 2020 at Uluru. And if you have the means, I suggest that you, um, you join. The speaker lineup is, is really good. And we well, see, we don't have... We don't have Australia's like a, let, let's call it we're we're in we're like a kindergarten of of UFO talks. You know they've got the they've got the what, what is that in the desert thing in America? There's like every other week there's some conference on somewhere, and I and I feel as though like we don't have the population. You know, got a, a tenth less than a tenth of the population here. And it's it's a bit of a shame that this is where it, like the fledgling, right? We're at the beginning of this, even though it's been going for well, my grandmother was going to these types of events, but the the people, I don't know, I think maybe they're a little bit more receptive, and they're they're becoming a lot um, a lot more widely attended. Maybe that's the right way to put it. I think the topic's not a, something you can be afraid of anymore. I think that's, I think that it's changed and for the better, you know, and, f and I think social media has some, um, some way to go on this, on, you know, the, getting the message out every, every once in a while I see that, uh, the Tic Tac UFO and the Navy talking about it, kind of uh, news items popping up. I don't repost them anymore. It's, it's, you just see it too often. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, all, all of that at you aside, um, this is Shiny Side Out, and this is show number 379. 70 and 300, that's right. That's right. It is. And last week, Mickey and I were fortunate <laughs> enough to do the show in the same room, and it's very difficult when you can't see the other person, and, it, uh, and you can't gesture, uh, you know... Uh, unseen because it's radio to another person sitting next to you so look um i i've listened back i haven't posted it yet but i've listened back to the show and gee the, the there's a, a difference when we do the show next to each other and we're going to try and do this a little bit more often as well because there is a there is a high amount of value to having the the rapport reflected uh, in the... It was uh, the second time only. And, only? And, yeah. 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 How many second. years? Eight right. years? It was only the second time. We, yeah, I know, right? Eight years. But but it is a, it is a very different animal. Um, I think it's better. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, we don't have any connectivity issues. Because the connectivity is not between Australia and the US. That pipe is fine. Yeah. The connectivity, when, when you hear us break up, it's between Dave and I. And Dave and I are, I don't know, 100 kilometers apart. Yep. In Australia, but the link to 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 America, which is some twenty, well, fifteen, eighteen thousand kilometers. That's right. That's fine. Not an issue there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Isn't that? It's so bizarre. But anyway, mm -hmm. look. Um, having put all that aside, let's put it all that aside and say, um, look, we're we're working on that part, and we'll we'll improve it. Mecky, how was your week? Ah, uh, look, I I cannot complain. So I won't. <laughs> it's a good week, my friend. I, I did enjoy being in the same location again. You know, anybody listening out there who enjoys the show and who's in a position to to make this a permanent thing for Dave and I, 
I want to say permanent, you know, something that could replace our livelihoods. We're more than uh, eager to discuss this, uh, quite keen. But uh, it is, it is, a, it's a different dimension. It's better. It's much better, and and, and we we get uh, more done. It's it's a more lively. Um, but anyway, you know, it's 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 uh, good. Other than that, though, it's been an interesting week. Um, a lot of things have happened. Uh, some some are concerning. Uh, Dave, uh, one one that concerned me greatly was there's now a child that has died in. In Uganda, of um, of Ebola, so it's the, the first yes, death. so it's uh, it's, it it's spreading. Mm -hmm. the, so it, well, it is. This is actually what happened. Was a family had gone to 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 the um, funeral of a family member in the Democratic Republic of Congo from Uganda, and then they had, they had come back infected. Um, and and uh, so they they had actually traveled there so yes it is spreading and um, and people are running away from the testing stations they're running away from uh, from the um, how can I put this best the uh, areas where people are being treated right so they actually are no longer trusting the uh, medical personnel which of course is not, not a good thing mm -hmm. uh, treatment there, is not very effective in, in, in case of Ebola as you might know yeah there were claims last time that people um, pretending to be doctors <clears throat> I'm not going to say the official doctors yeah, at all, but yeah. but people pretending to be doctors were actually injecting people with infected blood, uh, saying that yeah. it was a you know a way to be able to become immune to it, and uh, yeah, that just that didn't help. <laughs> Bloodborne disease. No, so, yeah, so mix it, let's they, mix it up. Yeah, sure. See, when, when, whenever these things happen, that, that's, it's actually catastrophically irresponsible. It, yeah. it is not. It is not a matter of. You know, making a quick buck or you know fooling someone, you 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 are now contributing actively to to uh, well a pandemic potentially outbreak and and I think and, that right was, now I think that was is, their true intention was well, just look, to, just to take people out. It's possible. I don't think it was there. They were there to make a dollar. I, I think they were just there to to make it worse. So. Uh, and look, that was the story that I heard. Possible. That was one of the you know uh, the Reuters feeds news articles from last um the la was it last year or the year before it's it's an annual peak anyway that it keeps occurring so so this this particular um outbreak has been going since august last year it is it's the longest running august it's now the second deadliest it'll soon surpass the first outbreak to become the deadliest mm -hmm. and and it's not the, the problem though dave is, is this it's it's not showing any mm -hmm signs of slowing down. Most of the deaths have occurred in the last three months. Oh, and most wow. of the infections, in fact, have occurred in the last three months. So, so what, what, what has been an active area or active uh, uh, theater of operations uh, for the last year almost, it's the last three months they've seen, uh, I think it's, it's about 50 or 60 percent of cases and deaths. Wow. So it is, it is actually getting worse. It's mm. getting worse, not better. And um, because so many medical staff have already perished. You know, if you frontline that's and then right. stuff in an Ebola, uh, you, you will die. So look, that that that's an, that's a problem. That's that's a that's a big problem, a problem. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, do we, and, do uh, you if you travel? if you go to Africa or set, you don't you, know, you don't be, have be to careful. go to Africa. You can just travel and encounter it because someone has travelled there or been in contact with someone else that's been there. Yeah, look, and that's exactly right. And look, I travel a lot. I see, I see airport security. I see this and that. People taking their shoes off, taking their belts off. Mm -hmm. You, you can't, you can't defend yourself against the virus or bacterium. It's, it's not possible, right? Um, when you get sick, I mean, they've got temperature scanners in some airports in Singapore, for example, right? They, they measure temperature on arrival. Other airports have the same thing, but ultimately, it, because the incubation varies encounter someone but you won't show any symptoms until maybe a week or two later no, right? at which point you probably have already been bingo yeah you've already been in touch with with 10 20 100 people who knows if if you presented immediately uh and and died within minutes it would be quick to act but also more easily containable because as long as you didn't come in contact with someone in the last few minutes you'd be all right but that's not the way it works. The gestation no, uh, period is your infectious period. Yeah, um, in, in, in incubation. incubation. Ge gestation would, 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 would suggest there's some kind of um, oh, so alien going to be born from it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, yeah. 
that's yeah. not the case, not yet anyway. No, it's incubation, and the incubation period is, is varies, in fact, from, from person to person. Obviously, with children, it can be... Um, it's actually funny. Some of these diseases affect uh, um, people that are young and old, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's understood. But there are a couple of other... A couple of fluke cases uh, over the last few years where specifically the younger, healthier adults in their 20s and 30s were affected the worst, which is uh, an odd, um, an odd uh, presentation of the disease. Um, the other thing, and this is actually in line with it, that uh, I found worrying, uh, it's, it's, it's a two-fold story. They, they, they found the severed head of a direwolf in uh, Siberia, yeah. um, and, uh, and it's massive. So it's, it's like a Game of Thrones type a big wolf, and um, oh, they, right. yeah, it was yes, fully intact. It was frozen, right? Even, yeah, yeah. Even, even the soft tissue, everything is fully intact. Uh, which is uh, no, no. Why, why they are bringing it up? Well, it's interesting in, in and of itself. But what it shows you is how much of the permafrost is actually melting. Now they've posted uh, another a news item the other, uh, I think yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, this is around the the speed with which the permafrost is melting. The time. We have spoken about this at this, on this show, and, and uh, I, I will continue to speak about it because I think all the projections are wrong because we don't have all the data and we don't have enough computing power to actually model it accurately. And, so and, what it says is the evidence well, uh, for this is also stated in this, is in this article, like that yeah, that exact yeah, phrase, absolutely. and, and that, well, that was what shone at me, and that's why I posted you in it, like I tagged you in it. I know, I know. All right. Maybe people are listening to us. Uh, but the point is that they, the, the melting that is occurring at this point today, mm. they didn't expect until 2090 in the modeling. 2090. Yes. So 70 years from now. We're 70 years ahead of schedule. Mm. Hurrah. Yeah? No, yay, not, yay not really. For, for us? Uh, yeah. yeah. For us. And look... It is, it is really, it is really, uh, and people, people still, I have, I have conversations with people, and, oh, you're an alarmist, or you're this and that, and I said, I said to people, you're living through climate change now, you're actually living in it, we see heat waves that are unprecedented, mm -hmm. thousands of people have all died as a result, we're seeing flooding events, we're seeing weather we have never seen before, Dave, hundreds of tornadoes, hundreds of tornadoes hit the American Midwest. 300. It's unprecedented. Yeah. What about the 56 degrees back in India? That is insane. 50 is the temperature in, in your or in our in our uh, hot water systems in Australia. That's where That's it's right. set. Yep. Otherwise, you scald yourself, right? So 56 degrees. If it's 56 degrees outside temperature, no wind. Let's say you know it's just that's what it is. You you have very a very short time to, to live unless you've got a lot of water with you. Forget about the the forget. Yeah, but sunstroke, even if you're in the shade, if it's that, if it's, if it's that kind of temperature. Sunstroke, that train left a long, a long time ago, oh, that's, and it's 56 that's, degrees. Good luck. No, 50, yeah, 56 degrees. That's insane. That's a temperature on the surface of the Earth, right? Mm -hmm. We always talk about that the Earth is in the Goldilocks zone. That's actually what people talk about. That. So, so what does Goldilocks zone mean? A Goldilocks zone is, is it means it's just right. You know, when the, when Goldilocks eats the porridge, the big porridge is too cold, the, the medium porridge is too um, hot. And the little porridge is just right. So that's the Goldilocks zone. So people always say that the Earth is in the Goldilocks zone of the solar system. That is completely incorrect. It's, 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 it's fake science. <laughs> and we are not in the Goldilocks zone, uh, meaning that, that life you know, can, can exist here without any problem. The only reason, the only reason we can exist on the surface of the planet is because we've got an atmosphere. Okay, if we didn't have the atmosphere that we have, including... The magnetic, uh, the, the the magnetic field, which That's is the right, Van Allen Belt. Core. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we didn't have any of that, then we wouldn't be able to live on this planet, right? Because it would be too hot, too cold, whatever. But the point, actually, be too hot. But the point is mm -hmm. that we don't live in the Goldilocks zone. We 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 live on a planet that is a Goldilocks planet. That's right. Just right. Mm -hmm. What and what's happening is that is changing at a rapid pace, at least as far as. Most of the species are concerned on the planet right now. Now, not just human beings, but all the other species. We're seeing a massive die-off because the temperature is changing, because the weather patterns are changing. It's not alarmist. It's happening. And here we are opening up more coal mines because that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Let's, let's do that. I mean, see, the thing is this, Dave. The ecosphere is going to change. What does that's it mean? Right. A whole bunch of species 
this will but I mean we've seen it before in the past you know right now a very small fraction of a percent is still alive that that you know in comparison to all the species that have ever have been alive right a very small fraction um, and the ecosphere is going to change and different species will live and, and some will you know some will thrive others won't it'll probably be a simpler ecosphere over initially and then it'll probably get more complex as time progresses but we're not going to kill life on the planet we're not going to do do that what we're going to do is we're going to kill off our own civilization and a whole bunch of other species that share our need to have a habitable surface of the planet, or habitable, uh, you know, as far as we are concerned. And we are moving away from that very rapidly. Trying we to are... go plants in 56 degrees. Yeah, exactly. Good luck. Now, some plants, some plants will thrive mm -hmm. if you have sufficient water. But the key, yeah. the key here is water. And another alarming fact that people seem to completely forget about... Yeah is that our freshwater sources are disappearing. That's right. Now, there's a lake called Lake, lake Baikal. It's one of the largest lakes uh, in the world. It's up in, in, in Siberia, or Central Asia, I guess, more or less. But it's a massive freshwater lake. And for some reason, it's shrinking. It is shrinking at such an alarming rate that if you go there today, you will see husks and hulls of ships uh, that, you know, for all intents and purposes, look like they're sitting in the desert. And, yep, and that's, that's kilometers right. away from yeah kilometers away from from the water. You go how how could that happen? That's just crazy talk, right? Now the answer to that, of course, is that the lake has retreated, and it's not the only lake that's shrinking, right? So so you've got so one you've got the shrinking of freshwater sources on the surface is lake accessible. Two, you have got a salinization problem as the as the sea levels rise. Okay, so as the sea levels rise, most Salt water is is is, is uh, likely mm. to, I guess, contaminate our freshwater sources because it's just you know closer to the source, uh, and uh, the rivers you know, are the, affected. Yeah, the water table beneath the the ground rises yeah. into and contaminates the freshwater um, subterranean water sources. Yeah. And, and and thank you. So the Adani mine that has just been okayed oh, by the geez, Queensland. Why well, don't start me? It, it, Environmental industry, uh, sorry, ministry, they just okayed it. Um, it's actually, it, it, it may very well affect one of the largest aquifers in Australia. So aquifers are massive caves. Think about them as massive caves, underground mm -hmm. oceans, but of fresh water, right? Yeah. And, and uh, the Adani mine is smack bang in the middle of it. And uh, even if they don't make it, um, the mine that is, even if they don't make it as big as they initially planned, now they, instead of 60 million tons, I think they're talking 10 or 20 million tons a year output, um, it will still uh, quite likely affect the aquifer. It will affect the Great Barrier Reef. It will have a whole, whole bunch of effects. Not, not to mention there would be no benefit to the Australian economy at all. I mean, zero benefit to the Australian economy because most of the stuff, most of the stuff is going to be shipped out to, to India, that's right. including the money they're making. So and that's, that's yeah, really not the plan the here. Get all the gas and coal. Yeah. So I was trying to tell people that the jobs that have been advertised as being a byproduct of the mine are secondary jobs. They're tertiary, right? The primary jobs are fly in, fly out, fly out people by the company. So you don't even see them. They'll have their own airport maybe, right? They'll just fly in, fly out mm -hmm. and disappear. And the, the, they don't live where the mine is. I've got, I've got fly in, fly out friends of mine. So, they didn't employ any of the locals from the, you know, from the local town to work in the mine. Oh, no. No, you don't do that. You get really high-paid people from somewhere else, and you fly them in. And it, yeah. it's, it's a dream world that the people that were fighting to get it in so they could get jobs. The only thing it does is it increase the, increases the rents in the town that because people who, you know, choose to fly in and fly out, but fly in, fly out, and stay somewhere locally, the the town naturally evolves a higher rental price, and there really isn't very much except for food, like you know groceries, that becomes extra. They get a they get an allowance to go to the coastline to you know have a holiday, and and spend money. So they don't usually spend it in the town. It's 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 beyond me to see why that this was at all, you know, approved by anyone. But you know, it, I, I suppose I, I don't, um, I, I don't receive any funds from Big Coal 
to make those choices. I, I don't know, Mackie. It's it's bizarre. The, the largest living organism, which is a community of other smaller organisms, which is the Great Barrier Reef, is at the highest risk. It's, it's right now teetering on a precipice of being totally destroyed by this by the mine. They wanted to gouge a great you know, waterway through the middle of it so they could get these giant ships in to transport the coal. What? Who's allowing that? But don't worry, you know, it's only a small portion of the, the reef that they're going to destroy. Is that right? <clears throat> but, you know, yeah, that's, it doesn't, that's right. doesn't matter. Of course, right? you know, not that it matters, right? Not... <laughs> don't worry, you know, sea level rise so, will kill a reef so... anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so yeah, exactly. Look, look, I'm not arguing here that we're responsible for um, climate change. What I'm saying, though, is this. We, we are making all the wrong choices and all the wrong decisions. Because we, we, we know that, that it is happening. There's something happening. Okay? There is something we, happening. We're yep. calling crazy weather. Yeah, cra crazy weather. We have to invent new, new terminology for things that haven't happened before. So we're inventing new things, with, you know, like the storm, the Super severity storm. of storms and such. Yep. Yeah, and we, we are, we're looking at temperatures, we're looking at, see, I mean, nations, island nations in the Pacific are planning on what to do when their island goes under, right? That's that's happening today. And they're talking and, about lawsuits and, against Australia for not acting. Yeah, it, it is, it is well, fair enough too, right? I mean, yeah. uh, it's, it's I mean, I mean, we're not the biggest Pluto. It's actually a very interesting thing that I saw on TV the other day, Dave. I, I, gotta share I, love, I love what you saw. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, there was a show and uh, I can't remember Ellen, Ellen Jones Ellen Jones had a show on TV right and he's got a lady on the show and, and anyway they, they, so they're talking about uh, Australia's relative contribution to uh, greenhouse gas emissions okay so let's assume that you've got you know like a like a pot of um, 100 coins and Australia's uh, contribution it would be let's say half a coin okay but let's take a, a, a full coin out here it is one coin he puts it in the ball. And he goes, you see the rest here? What Australia does is completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. And if you just look at the, the way he explained it, you would go, oh, yeah, well, he's, he's got a point. I mean, if we just, you know, like, you know, less than 1% of the total output, then you know, what does it matter? Now, it, it's actually a flawed logic, and I'll tell you why. And Because uh, I watched another thing, you know, I think it was the drum or some such thing that uh, countered Ellen Jones' argument. Yeah. And if you're half smart, you can count it yourself. Because what they said is, okay, so there's a whole bunch of countries like, let's say, France, Great Britain, um, uh, Madagascar, blah, blah, blah. let's say like 50, 60 countries, right? Like small countries. And they all contribute one coin, right? In and of themselves, each of those countries, like Australia, makes no difference. That was the but argument if they all by don't Alan do anything, Jones, yep, and all right? his show, yep. yeah. If they, yeah if, they, if they all don't do anything, then that means... 50% of the world's emissions will not be reduced. So I'm not saying that China and America aren't the biggest, uh, you know, culprits, if you want to call it that. That's right. But unless the, the other countries, right, the smaller countries, the, the, the people that, you know, are, are less on the scale of things, unless they get together and do something, 50%, 60% even. Yeah, I, I think of, it was 58 of, or some 54%. Yeah. It was greater than half. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of the world's emissions will not be addressed. Mm -hmm. That's even if China and America went ahead and did it. So just because you're small and, and you know, because your contribution or your, your, your particular amount of pollution doesn't seem to matter, does not absolve you from responsibility. You because if China everybody and, felt that way... Yeah, China and the yeah. US only add up to 46% of the yeah. world's polluters well, in total. Only. Well, that's what yeah, I but, say but, only. Yeah, no, but look, but, but, you're but, right. Uh, no, but but when you this, think about it that uh, way, this, yeah, but, you know... This, but, there's a larger uh, ethical argument here, and I need you to understand that. Uh, in the world, in the world at large, uh, if you look at history, in order for something bad to happen, the bad guys didn't need to be strong. They didn't need to be overwhelming. They just needed for the good people, the right-thinking people, to do nothing. Every time, if, yeah, good if you look at the only time that something horrendous or evil or de deplorable succeeded was because the vast majority of, of the right-thinking people, of the good people, you would call them, simply decided to do nothing. It's what uh, Burke said. Um, 
he said, um, or Bertrand Russell, I think it was Bertrand Russell, sorry. He said, uh, for, for evil to succeed in the world, all it takes is for good men, and I'm going to add women, mm-hmm. uh, uh, to do nothing. That's all it takes. It's for good men and women to do nothing. That's it. That's, that's all you have to do. It's the same for this thing here. If you don't do anything, you've made a choice. You've made the decision not to do something. That's cool, but I need you to be aware of that. You've made a cho- choice. There's a decision that was made. We're not doing anything because it doesn't matter. I mean, when they took away the Jews and the communists and the homosexuals and the handicapped, oh, what could I do as one person? I can't do anything. I can't. What, what can I do? I mean, they're taking them away, right? Right? But then when they come for you, there's no one left to help you, is there? <laughs> no, that's, that's it. It's all over, so, you know? And, and, and this is really where we are. We, 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 ha- we are living in an age where we like to, and this is really important, we live in an age where we like to abdicate responsibility. And we've done it for all our history. Do you know why the Catholic Church is su- successful? The Catholic Church is still the single largest uh, religious institution on the planet, right? I mean, you know, the other religions that are potentially have more adherence overall, but the Catholic Church has the most adherence of any single uh, uh, sect or, or denomination in the world, by far, the most. Why are they so successful? Because they forgive you. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your responsibility. Nah, you're okay. You go to heaven. Oh, you've done that? Don't worry about it. Do you know what really upset me, Dave? I'll tell you what really upset me. Let me Go tell on. you. Two weeks ago, I was listening to the radio. And there was a law that was going to be introduced in Australia, which, which would uh, have, uh, um, I guess, made it compulsory for priests to um, go to the police and, and uh, let them know if somebody had confessed to uh, yes, child abuse. Right. Yep. Okay? To child abuse. There's, there's, there's a law that it's, it's going to um, hopefully take effect. And, and if you know, like uh, any case of child abuse, the Catholic Church or the Catholic priest taking the confession have the obligation to go ahead and do that. You know what the Catholic Church said? All the, all the big wigs? No. Nah. Can't do that. We can't break the sacrament. We can't break the sacrament mm-hmm. of um, of confession. We can't break this. What? What? Show me in the Bible where it says that there's a sacrament of confession. Show me. I'll give you a million dollars. A million. I'll give you a million dollars right now. I'm saying it right now, right? Mm-hmm. If you can show it to me where it says that in the New, New Testament. Don't forget the Old Testament. If you can find the Old Testament, fine. Knock yourself out. In any of the apocryphal texts. All right? Go to the books that are lost, too. I don't care. Show me where it says that. Nowhere. It doesn't. And, you know, it is, it is this, this arrogance that really upset, okay? Because there are people here, and they say, oh, no, see, because the Pope is the representative of God, so he's infallible. And the sacrament of confession can't be broken because it's a sacrament. It's a circular argument, which is based on my spaghetti monsters better than your spaghetti monster, okay? <laughs> so I, it's, I find this, I know a lot of people hate me for this, that's fine, I don't care. But this is the kind of thing that is wrong with the world, right there. Because, hey, I'm no longer, they, in the Middle Ages, they used to sell these, uh, that's why Martin Luther got upset, they used to sell these uh, absolutions, they were called, right, prior to a crime. So I would go to my uh, you know, traveling priest and then go, oh, I, need, um, I need a couple of letters of, of absolution, right? Oh, okay, here you go. That cost you five, four, five gold pieces or whatever it was, right? Here you go. Done. Thank you very much. And off I go murdering someone, but I'm okay because I had been absolved of the crime already. Here it is, mm-hmm. my absolution. So they were selling them. They were selling absolutions. It's not how many more just give them out for, you know, for free. And, and this, is, this is insane because as we have bought into that. Who has the authority to forgive you these things? Take a step back, please. This is insanity. So these people, okay, there's a priest there. He says, oh, look, no, yeah, you've done this. Oh, no, you shouldn't have done that, that rape and that killing was probably a bad idea too. Uh, and then, oh, what? You, 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 you were stealing something? Oh, that's just as bad. Yeah, look, uh, uh, ten, uh, 10 Hail Marys and um, you like to light 50 candles. Okay, okay. Now, uh, go forth, my son or daughter, and sin no more. That's what they say. Go forth and sin no more. Done. Okay, there done. done. Until, until next Sunday. Until next Sunday when I come to confession. <laughs> so, do, do, does anybody see the insanity of this? And not only that, but so someone confesses to a serious crime, right? Let's say a serious crime. 
I wonder if someone confessed to a terrorist act. I wonder what happened then. Oh, you know, I'm going to blow up this place in, in, in the confessional, right? And the priest goes, oh, oh, what, what do I do here? I mean, I can't, I can't talk about pedophilia. I'm okay with that. I can't talk about, you know, rape and, 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 and molestations and all that kind of stuff. I can't do that. But terrorism, oh, you know, that's, that's a big one. This is, this is crazy. Does nobody understand how, how crazy this is? How can we let the Catholic Church get away with saying, ah, you know, yeah, people tell us something in confidence. Yeah, we can't really tell you. Do you know what happens if someone says this in a legal case? If, even if it's a legal, a lawyer privilege and all that stuff, they're held in contempt of court. That's and then right. they're jailed. Mm. Oh, you know, in contempt of court. You don't want to tell us? That? It's okay, you don't have to tell us. It's all right. We're not going to torture you, but you're going to go to jail. Okay, that's what's going to happen. Contempt of court. If someone comes to you and tells you, yeah, I've just, you know, killed uh, five children. Yeah, I feel really bad about it. Oh, it's, you know, it's really weighing heavily. Oh, can you just forgive me? Sure. Sure. But it's, you know, it's not, not a good thing. But, you know, well, you've come to me and told me, so it's all good now. You tend not no, to no, lose no one as many followers if you just let them all yeah. have their Bingo, way, right? right? It, it, is, it is the beauty of that particular system. But that's not your fault. You're fine. We, we, we forgive you. You're gonna be oh, you're gonna to go to heaven. Well, not Don't just worry. we. Every, you're gonna be at the, you're, you're completely forgiven. You're completely forgiven, right? But but the, the one the one proviso is you really have to repent. <laughs> That's the one. You really have to mean it, right? You have to be really sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry for ranting here, but no, no, no. Doesn't it's, anybody it's, else it's see that? Just like when you have uh, children, and one hit the other one. And you have to say the one, the one that hit them. You got to go. You've got really got to be sorry. And they go, "Oh, I'm sorry." Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. You actually have to be sorry. Can you, can you maybe feel a little empathy for the person you just bung over the head with a shoe, right? Can you say sorry like you mean it? Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. And they walk away. So what was that? All right. Exactly. Exactly. One hundred percent. It, it makes it makes no difference to the crime. It really, but honestly. but it, it is that basic human requirement or mm -hmm. need to, to to have someone to forgive you and and not to be responsible for something, not to be the one to blame. And this is unfortunately translating itself into how we deal with everything in life, including the topic of climate change, including the topic of responsibility, including you know you know I mean. The thing is this, most of our listenership probably wouldn't be affected immediately. I mean, you know, you probably are. I mean, some, on the outskirts, you might be affected. You might have noticed it's getting hotter. Uh, summers are longer. Winters are shorter. Uh, the weather is a bit more severe. But in the first world, you know, where I guess a lot of you guys live, uh, it's okay. Because we've got, you know, we've, we've got fairly good infrastructure. We're okay. In the, in the, in, in the developing countries, it's not, not quite the same. And if you're, li if you're listening from a country that isn't quite as developed, or it doesn't have as good infrastructure as, as, as you know, let's say America or, or Europe or whatever, then you would feel it more uh, keenly. Uh, the the effects of this would be much harsher for you, and, and, and in fact, a lot more existential. So it is really a, a problem with human beings and, and not wanting to be held to account. It, it's uh, you know, there's a psycho, uh, there was a psych experiment I conducted years ago where um, they measured the size of a crowd in relation to uh, social responsibility. So they, they faked the guy having a heart at, at, a, at, a, at a set of streetlights, right? And, and the more people there were, the less likely it was for someone to step forward and help That's that right. person. However, if you, if you whittle down the group to you know, a handful or even only a couple someone would step up because guess what there's no one else there but the more people are there mob mentality again the less likely i'm the one to to do something i don't have to do anything no 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 no, 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 no. there'll there's be someone, someone who does it <laughs> yeah right it's insane but that's who we are i don't know if you saw this footage of a, of a child i think it was in in traffic in china it was hit hit by uh, i think i think it, i think it was hit by a car i can't remember the exact mm -hmm. circumstances Starts. All I remember is, and I think it was a child. It was the child was lying there for hours on the sidewalk. That's right. Clearly, clearly in, in, insensible, right? Clearly. Um, and, and I tell you what, in, in Sydney, some people in the street, and um, 
and there was one. I mean, normally I, I, I did a sleeping homeless person. You don't bother them. You know, it's, it's you know, not much you can do um, in that space. I mean, you can't help every homeless person get back on their feet. But by the same token, if, if someone is really oddly lying on the street and, and behaves strangely or doesn't behave at all, you know, it's, it's maybe you know passed out, then you should do something. So uh, the other day, I, I saw a person like that. And there, there was like there's nothing around them, but they just had they were just lying on the footpath. But but in 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 sense you know in, in sense in, in sense insane I should say right with with um, this clearly um, unconscious so I, I went down I tried to shake him and it turned out that this person was quite drunk but you never know right so so that was I guess okay but it, but everybody was just yeah it's not my problem it's just someone like lying in the middle of the footpath I'm telling mm -hmm. you in the, in the middle of the footpath people are step around you step around you right. Um, it's it's um, it's what happens though, and then Sydney streets get quite busy. So well, why is it my responsibility? Why 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 do I have to do anything? Right? I'm too busy to help. I've got I've got something to do. Um, Mickey, yeah, I, I'm, you're I'm afraid you. to get involved. I don't want to get involved. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get involved. You mean to touch yeah. touch someone? Hey, um, I just want to put it out there that an, an hour ago, um, the Vancouver bushfire was announced and there's fire evacuations in Lytton. Just um, letting you know if you live anywhere around there, keep an eye out and stay safe. Follow instructions. We're talking about a, a Canadian bushfire, Mackie. Yeah, it's... it's, it's um, I hear you, man. It's crazy, just, want to, right? just want to go back. Don't want to, don't want to roll it back too far, but just, you know, you know what? Just crazy, crazy <laughs> times. Um... <clears throat> Uh, the other thing, the the new Gulf of Tonkin, uh, mm. event, oh yeah, <laughs> which which um, I I just wanted to bring up, and the moment I saw it, I've gone here we go. <laughs> I didn't think for one minute. I I didn't have the sense of urgency that meant that I reacted in the way that I suppose the news story was supposed to form a reaction in my brain and that is oh my goodness those Iranians those nasty Iranians have um, decided to to do something completely stupid I didn't think that I my first thought was convince me it's not a Gulf of Tonkin false flag convince me and then I found news stories from the ship's owner saying that he's not convinced that it was the Iranians. He said he saw something fly into the ship and it wasn't a mine. Yeah, I saw a picture of that actually. Um, and the the two entry points are way above the uh, the you know the sea. The sea level. Line. Uh, yeah, the yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, we, which isn't consistent with the mine anyway, and it's consistent more with his story. And, but I I watched the entire broadcast live of the uh, American fellow military officer giving the well you know it's uh, the the Iranians and you know, and and it was it, it reminded me of nine eleven within the first twenty minutes it's Osama bin Laden right it, okay so how do you know yeah, it's the Iranians yeah. all we have is a ship that's damaged. If your intel gives you more than that, tell us, right? And he had nothing, and but they've they've sort of like been looking through the sniper's scope at Iran of recent weeks, trying to do something so they can fight them. There is, it, is that the feeling? I hope I'm not alone. I, I just feel as though they're 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 pressing and pushing and shoving and trying to it, it is, instigate something. It is the policy. It's the, yeah, it's the declared policy. And I forget his name now. Yeah. Uh, one of the White House advisors. Mm -hmm. it's, his, it's his declared policy to, to start a war with Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. It is, it, is, it is in the policy program. And, and any, any excuse will do, right? And I, don't think, I don't think Trump wants to go to war with Iran. That's, that's what I think. I, I don't get that feeling at all. He's really not rattling, you know, that that, that war drum. But I, the people around him, I think they definitely want to go to war with Iran. I think there's a definitive uh, action and, and push towards it. Again, um, do we think Iran is, is, is a wonderful country and it, it, treats, it treats its people really well? Well, maybe not. 
maybe not, but I guarantee you that um, the more people will die if there's if there's an invasion than would otherwise. Yeah, okay? that's true. That's so true. if you want to if you want to take the purely utilitarian approach, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is better for for human beings at large for our planet to not invade Iran, and more people will live. Right, more people yeah. will live. And, and, and life must ultimately and and, uh, and and definitively be preferable to the alternative. Because, you know, when, when you're dead, you're dead. And that's all we know at this point. I mean, we've got some ideas. But, uh, you know, when you're alive, well, there's mm -hmm. hope. There's something for you, okay? So it is, it is just, uh, it, it's just something that, that is a bit of a worry. And I don't know how this is going to play out. I mean, if, if, if they are making up that stuff. But, I mean, why would Iran attack them? I, I get, mean, that's what I want to know, it's, right? Why? It's the stupidest thing that you could possibly imagine. Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, right? I wouldn't throw rocks at, at someone who was going to kill me and said they were going to anyway, right? I wouldn't in, in, yeah. antagonize them. That, that's just foolish action. Um, but look, uh, you know, uh, Iran is supposed to have continued and not stopped with their nuclear uh, testing but is that really the reason to stop someone or to try to go to war and kill most of the people there are i i don't know i i think i think that the world has gone mad i think the people the you know the military industrial complex is is and and they the people who are keen on using up some more of those you know those weapons mickey they're just lying around doing nothing you know yeah, well, we, uh, but it doesn't expire yet. We have to use them, otherwise we have to use junk, yeah, yeah. and we have to buy new weapons anyway. Right? And what are the well, sales? The sales people trying to sell the new weapons. Hey, we've got all these really cool weapons, but there's no, uh -huh. there's no way we can demo them. How about if? What if we, um, yeah. you know, spark up a, another conflict so we can show you what these new weapons do? I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm, making, like I'm making that conversation up, but I'm, you know what? It's probably happened. Because I remember oh, seeing no, during the Iraq. I guarantee War, it. Wasn't was yeah. it? We're gonna sh we're gonna you know they're gonna use this big weapon, this anti troop weapon, anti personnel weapon. It was the largest explosion that was seen in the war against Iraq. Then it we could take out ninety thousand people or whatever it is, right, in a single blast. Crazy stuff. It's 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 the daisy cutter. Yeah, that's what I euphemistically call it. The daisy cutter. <laughs> wow. No, right. Yeah, and yeah. it's actually an air. It's an air fuel bomb, right? It's an air fuel bomb. What it does, it it, it explodes, and it's the primary explosion, um, and disperses a, a fuel load. Like it could be any any kind of fuel load, anything that is ignitable, mm -hmm. you know. And then it's a massive radius, and the secondary explosion ignites that. The shock wave from that thing is is comparable to to the shock wave from a nuclear blast. Wow. Um. So, so you get the nuclear weapon without the radiation. It's, so you, it's quite you remember a thing. seeing this too, right? Oh no no it's a thing yeah. Oh, absolutely yeah it's yeah, a yeah. thing and wow. uh, it was yeah a daisy cutter so just remember daisy cutter if yeah, you, okay, like, Google something Google time. Google that <laughs> I, actually I won't, I'm not going to do I'm not going to Google it I I'd use Duck Duck Go over Google if I'm going to look duck, at something duck, like duck. that my goodness ooh you on tour eh yeah tour <laughs> yep ooh <clears throat> I I've got a tour <laughs> browser I don't use it very often. Yeah. If if you're not in the know, Tor is the only way to get to the dark web. Um, so good luck to you. Oh, yeah, I use it. You, I use you just threw me under the bus. Uh, I know. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did it, and what I I'm really interested in doing is is googling something and then googling the opposite or the anti of it. So I, I tried to Google something. You know, we've got two minutes left, so I, I tried to Google anti-vaxxing. Uh, you know the pros and cons. So first, I tried to look for the the pros of anti-vaxxing, and it came up with a bunch of vaxxing websites. Uh, and then I thought, well, I'll have a look at the benefits. Exactly the same responses that Google provided me. Exactly the same results for looking for specifically the. Uh, I wanted to, you know, become a, an anti-vaxxer. Same results as a vaxxer. So. Yeah, uh, I'm watching it now. I'm seeing everything's changing. Um, you know, uh, 1984, man, it's real. This is what's going on. There's too many examples to give you, but I, I just, I wanted to let you know that the the algorithms are now all changed. And good luck with that. Good luck with trying to do some research on something. 
if you're trying to find what isn't yeah. currently the the narrative. Because yeah. we're seeing people getting there was a World War a, a historian who um, just yesterday had his entire YouTube uh, video history gone because he was a yeah. World War Two historian and they declared all of his work uh, hate speech. But he wasn't. Oh, really? Yes, it was only informational. He had no personal opinions in there. Huh. And it's gone now. And he, the, you know, you know when you just do live feeds, you don't have any recourse, right? You don't have Little any of it. That's the music. That's the music. Sweet ass. Hey, take, it was, look, it's only a short break. Take the time to donate. Click some links on the on the website and uh, have a little have a little break. We'll be back in about two minutes' time. <laughs> You're listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Let's test Mickey's audio, if he's muted or not muted. I am here, and welcome here. back to Shining Sing Out with Dave and Mackie. And this is show number 379, 970, and 300. We're talking about Giant. <clears throat> and we're on page uh, 55 of 75. 55 of 75. Sweet 75. It's been going for a while. This is interesting stuff. Uh, why Giants? Well, because, like most mysteries, there's a lot more to it than we originally thought. I mean, the funny thing is this, right? This is, this is really something to... to to get your um, laughing year round, it's it is easy to talk about UFOs. It's easy to talk about, about Atlantis. It's easy to talk about you know all kinds of conspiracies. You know the, the Bilderbergers, the, the Rothschilds, da, da da and only focus on that and only do it very, very um, uh, I guess a, a very on the surface. You know very narrowly, and not much depth to it at all. And you can't do that, but you will miss out on the actual of the information. What we've learned, well, not just over the last eight years, but it certainly brought it home for me with a vengeance because of the research that actually does go into these shows because um, we don't want to make it boring for you guys. But um, what, what really brought it home for me was, that, was the fact that everything is, is, is connected. You can't look at any of these phenomena in isolation. And, and so, so giants, believe it or not, are deeply embedded into every other phenomenon we've discussed. They're right, going right back to the Anunnaki and the Igigi. In fact, I believe the root word for giant comes from Igigi. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. not, not, uh, don't have any proof. It's just something I'm thinking. I've got, got some linguistic leanings. I do I enjoy uh, linguistic puzzles. But um, because the, the original is it's gigantes, obviously, you know, um, in, in, in Greek. And that word had to come from somewhere. And, and there's too many syllables and, and, and vowels and consonants that are the same in the igigi and the, the, the word giant. Not only that, uh, the igigi, which uh, are potentially the watchers uh, in, from, the, from the Bible, as it were, are also those sons of God that came to the earth and, and had children with earth women, which is another interesting fact because all of the giants, all the giant mythology speaks of the giants being children of women of the earth, of earth herself, of Terra, uh, as it were, or Gaia, more, more to the point, and some other outside force, um, you know, be, be other gods or, or something. But it's, it's always earth women, or the earth as the womb, if you will, mm -hmm. that gives birth to the, the children of the Gigi, which are the heroes of old, the giants, you know, they're the mighty men. And uh, so it is all connected. You, you can't run away from it. If you choose to then say, oh, no, Becky, that's just, you just, uh, you just, uh, what was, what's the word? You're forcing these connections. You're forcing them. Mm. <laughs> am I, am I really? Go back to the primary texts. Read the um, cuneiform 
the translations of the cuneiform tablets, right? To read, read, read what it says. These, these are translations that are officially accepted by the scientific community. Have a read, see what you think. Then look at the what we discussed here today, uh, the the legends of the of the of the um, of the peoples of the world around the giants. In fact, the next one we're going to talk to you about is going to delve into some of the uh, Cherokee, or even uh, not just the Cherokee, but also the uh, some of the other North American uh, and American uh, tribes. In fact. Um, some believe that that is it possible that there were Denisovan hybrids, right? And now the Denisovans are, are a um, an, um, a branch of Homo sapiens that that we believe has died out. And uh, it's uh, were they uh, giants with double row teeth, flattened heads, and six fingers? Were they possibly Denisovan hybrids? On page fifty five. Or fifty-four. We can't the title. be because we've last last week we read from a different point. That's all right. You did? Yeah, we're in the tinfoil hat zone area. Are you sure? Okay. It, it, uh, forbidden archaeology: the giants of North America. Yeah, that's right. We're we're in there Perfect. already. Perfect. That's just the one. Yeah, no, that's just the one before. That. Okay, let's let's take it from, from the top then. Let's take the tinfoil hat zone from the top. But the, the point is. That they all have these legends. They all have this mythology around giants, creatures of, of large, uh, you know, appearance, humans, human beings, but just bigger. And uh, I, I postulated some some time ago that it may very well be, and this is completely tinfoil heads on. Since we're going tinfoil heads on now, that I, I believe that that we die early or earlier than we should, and that we don't go through all the stages of growing up. So we, we die pretty much, in my opinion, as teenagers or thereabouts. Oh, what we perceive, even if you're hundred years old, you, you're still pretty much in, in, in the mental state of a teenager as far as the uh, overall longevity of our race is concerned, in my opinion. And I think there are a whole bunch of uh, stages of aging or growing up that we simply do not experience because we die too early. If, you all, if we all died in our 30s, we, very few of us would understand what wrinkles are, or gray hair, or arthritis, or even menopause. That's probably the biggest one. If you die before the age of 30, menopause would be a completely unknown phenomenon. Okay? For example. Or, you know, um, teeth. I mean, you get teeth, two sets of teeth. You get, you get the milk teeth, and then you've got the adult teeth. Who is to say? Oh, this is going to get me a lot of hate. Here we go. Who is to say that we are encoded to produce another set of teeth as we get older, mm -hmm. or several sets of teeth? Who is to say? Who is to say other physiological changes wouldn't take place? Where we might even grow bigger. Who knows? Now, oh, that's crazy talk, maker, because it doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen because we die too soon. That's why it doesn't happen. Okay. There's a lot of. So we've mapped our DNA, right? Good for us. We think only between 2 and 5% of our DNA does stuff. Between 2 and 5% of our DNA does stuff. Nothing else does anything. Oh, well, that's not entirely true. But really? What, what about the... It's like saying the universe. Oh, yeah, we, we, we don't know where 98% of the universe is. Yeah, we don't know. Dark energy, dark matter. What? To me... I'm sorry, but that's just that's intellectual laziness. Let's figure this out. Let's see where all the stuff is. You can't just not find something and then say, oh, it's dark. It's maybe it's dark DNA, Dave. You heard it here first. It's dark oh, DNA. Don't. That's, <laughs> that's where we are. We're sciencing all day long. But look, I don't want to get too carried away with this. We, are, we do want to talk about forbidden archaeology. <clears throat> Tinfoil heads on. So please fasten your seatbelts. Keep your hands inside the vehicle at all times and suspend your individual reality monitors. No okay? photography. You might startle the phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> the giants of ancient North America. It is a well-known fact that it is written by the winners. I think we can all agree with that motherhood statement. The whole historiography has numerous unknown facts which are never or at best only partially contained in today's textbook. Right? Uh, one of your favorite ones, Dave, there was this, this kingdom. Um, I, um, the name escapes me now. But you, you made a point of it earlier. That like see a whole it's a whole it's a whole empire that's completely forgotten by everyone. Um, just good God. 
Yeah, boom, right there. Researchers and historians must therefore dig very deep into the old archives in order to bring the real truth to light. Let's not forget Gilbert Legatepe here. It doesn't fit anywhere. <laughs> okay. And but clearly so what happened? How did who? Right? No, we don't know. Doesn't make any sense. It was, it was some kind of cult. Thing, really, mm -hmm. the problem here is that the manipulated, falsified knowledge of history has been so angered in our understanding of the world that all facts and information that run counter to these simple beliefs, most of which are based on lies or, well, misinformation. I mean, lying implies a, 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 mis, uh, a, a sinister, a forethought. Now, while I do believe that exists, I think there's a whole bunch of stuff which is simply um, just bad information. Right? Just bad information. Now. Again, um, yeah, the problem is that the uh, uh, you know uh, the, uh, most of the uh, most of which are based on lies are reflexively rejected by the mass of the population for incomprehension. So most of the stuff that doesn't agree with what we all agree with is dismissed out of hand. Is what it says. Okay, no, no, yeah, like this lady, um, uh, Steen Mac Elizabeth Steen McIntyre, a small thing only, a small. I think she 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 uh, um, put the date of her site in in uh, it was New Mexico, I think. The 10,000 uh, years before the officially s sanctioned timeline mm -hmm. of human settlement for the Americas. And, but it's, it's, again, she did the dating. And then follow-up shows we went back to it and we found evidence uh, that every subsequent dating of the material she found has agreed with her. So her dating is correct. Tell her that while she cries over a, uh, over a set of daisies because she's now a uh, florist. If she's still alive, I don't know, actually. The problem here is that the manipulated and falsified knowledge of history has been so anchored. Oh, yeah, I just uh, I shared it with you. It's, 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 it, we, we, we can no longer walk away from it, right? So what's actually going on here? That is why more and more alternative researchers and enlightened people are asking themselves what is actually going on here. And this is why you're listening to the station, I hope. Why was and is the truth manipulated and falsified? And who's responsible for now we're getting into the, um, you know, the crazy bits. Since facts and information that have been kept secret up to now are now constantly being uncovered, one can state that there has been a historical cover-up. But even today it continues because one cannot simply deviate from it now. All history books would have to be rewritten. Dave, do you remember the show we did in education? Mm -hmm. Now, we, the question was asked, we found this, why? why? I mean, the, today's uh, school books are full of uh, false. Uh, information, right? It's just, I mean, it's, it's, it wasn't malicious, it's just science has moved on. You know, we, our knowledge has moved on. But you know what the answer was? It'd be too expensive to reprint them. So we leave all the wrong stuff in there because it just costs too much to tell people what it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's insane. Despite, all... despite the fact that you would charge for the book anyway, you right? still had to right? buy the but book. But see, see the thing, the thing is this, though, it's pure profit now, because you just it's already there, you're just printing it, right? It's only the cost of year, printing. Every if year, every year, they just to, make right, yeah? But, you know, Mackie, uh, yeah. the, the, my argument was, when I looked at it, it was pre-World War II was the original date, and it had a bunch of reprint dates after it. Yeah, I know. That's just, I that's know. insane. But, the, it, look, yes, 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 it is. So, welcome to the asylum. All the real knowledge and secret archaeological discoveries made all over the world fall under the secrecy of the Black Project. These, discuss these discoveries are so sensitive that they're completely excluded from normal research and reporting. And look, we will actually close this show in probably a couple of weeks' time with uh, some uh, look at the Smithsonian, what they hold. Dave? Yeah. The ancient giants of North America. An important part of these historical secrets are the ancient giants of North America. If you have never heard of it, don't be surprised, because the existence of human giants in the Earth's past is one of the best-kept secrets in history. In the same time of the first European settlers in North America, thousands of old pyramid-shaped burial mounds were discovered all over the country, and these graves often contained the skeletons of human giants up to four meters in size. The reason why it was no longer reported after the 19th century was that these giants in no way fit in the pattern of traditional histo histography 
or human evolution. Any researcher who nevertheless dared to report on it was discredited or lost his job. The notions of real giants did not fit into the image of socially accepted knowledge. Today, there is almost no mention of these giants in any textbook in the world, but they are still mentioned in numerous ancient writings, also in the Bible and the Quran, as Mekki and I have spoken about in previous shows. A key role in the cover-up of the North American giants was played by the American Smithsonian Institution. It's an institution now headed by the government and military. The institution's archaeologists have removed hundreds, if not thousands, of giant skeletons from the mounds, the tombs of the giants. Most of these giants had a size of more than 2.4 meters. Some of the giant skeletons had flat skulls and six fingers and toes. Since 1774, it also came to the discovery of the old buildings of the giants. They created whole cities long before the first Indians appeared in North America. Until the beginning of the 20th century, it was regularly reported in the newspapers of the time, even in the New York Times. I said, I said New York, New York Times. Many of the giants, large stone plants show similarities to numerous other ancient megalith plants all over the world. All of these buildings were designed according to a precise astronomical and mathematical criteria, which is also completely ignored by school science today. Where did this knowledge come from, Mekki? One of the first researchers to report on all of this is the American Jim Vieira. His first lectures and documentaries have been deleted and censored several times from the web or YouTube. And only over the years had he managed to bring his knowledge to the public. <clears throat> Today Vieira is a star on the History Channel because he has been hosting the program Search for the Lost Giants since 2014. According to Jim Vieira, there is an ongoing cover-up of America's historical history. So the actual history. Historians wrote their own version and decided to completely conceal certain parts of the existing culture of ancient North America. This included the mysterious culture of the ancient giants, which was, which was extremely advanced and uh, quite astonishing in its feats. The puzzle around this lost part of the story has to be put back together piece by piece. Old stone structures in New England have undergone uh, C14 tests and it has been determined that they are several thousand years old. Now you can't actually C4 test stone, so I, I suggest they probably found some organic material near it. It is written in the Bible that gods once resided on earth, and these gods were giants. The battle of David against Goliath is also famous. But don't, let's not, then, this is not in the text, but let's not forget the ancient uh, uh, um, pictograms, the pictures that the um, Sumerians and Babylonians left, where the, where the gods were shown to be of enormous size. Compared yes, to human absolutely beings. absolutely true. Okay. Let's, so, so we can talk about the Bible, sure enough, but there's evidence that is much older in the Bible uh, supporting this. Another well-known researcher who has actually been with us, who has devoted himself to the history of the giants, is Michael Tellinger. Tellinger points to another passage in the Bible in which it can be read that the Nephilim were so tall that normal people acted like grasshoppers against them. For example, Michael Tellinger was able to locate a fermor from a human skeleton, 3.5 meters tall. 3.5 meters. Now, it doesn't sound like much, right? And I'm departing from the text here again, but for a second. But 3.5 meters puts you eye level to a third story building. Okay, like you're looking at the third story window here at three and a half meters. So it's, it's tall. This femur, which is a, a, a leg bone, mm. the, you know, the upper, upper leg bone, was in the archives of Witwatersrand University in Johannesburg, South Africa. It was discovered in the 1960s by miners in Namibia. It's always miners that make these finds, gentlemen and ladies. And these days we have automated mine sites. You know what that means? Ain't no people around finding crazy stuff and because it, it's it, all getting, you It know, just gets ground up by the, the big chewing heads of the machinery. Yeah, yeah. So it appears that this evidence of the bone, of course, that the giants also existed in Africa. 
This find proves the existence of human-like giants in southern Africa at least 40,000 years ago. I mean, again, this is uh, related to this particular bone find. There's also a video in which the director of the Institute of Human Evolution at the University of with what is run, again, this is South Africa, Professor Francis Thackeray, Michael Tellinger, presents the giant bone. Okay? Such inappropriate finds are largely ignored by academic research today, but that was not always the case. Before the broad acceptance of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, the giant skeletons were still accepted by archaeology, and it was generally assumed that giants once populated all of North America. Let's take a breath here before I hand it to you, Dave. So, I mean... The thing is this, we, we, we find really strange animals all the time, and, and, and we still find new things, we find new dinosaurs, we find this, we find that, and we found, recently we found um, evidence of really small people, the homo forensis, like little dwarfy kind of people, right, but homo sapiens, nonetheless, then solvents. we find other branches of the homo uh, sapiens tree, if you will, and we know that we have DNA from at least two uh, um, species of Homo sapiens that we no longer can identify. So why is it such a stretch to see that, or to to accept, or even to 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 entertain the thought that giants may have in fact once existed? It's, it's still my because the, the, our stories, our mythology is rife with giant lore. Mm -hmm. Think about the crocodile. If just for a second, take 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 a look at the crocodile and take a look at the shark. A long long time ago. A shark, a megalodon, okay, um, would have uh, would have uh, uh, compared to to a great white as as a great white would compare to a sardine. Mm -hmm. um, these were massive, gigantic sharks, bigger than blue whales today, mm -hmm. right? Crocodiles today are large; they're three meters in length. I mean, you don't know, you know. I've I've come up and close and personal with crocodiles, not in the wild only in, in, in the zoo under control conditions, so I suggest you don't uh, go out in the wild and find them. But the point is, they were much larger at some... There were still crocodiles, is the point here. There were still crocodiles and there were still sharks, just much bigger Like 13 meters long. Yeah. Now, this is a... Now, you think, oh, 13 meters, that's, a, that's giant. Yeah, if you saw a 13 meter crocodile, you would be the new... World champion, 100 meter <laughs> runner. That would be you. You. I don't care what shape you're in. That would be you. Uh, but it's not just a crocodile and shark. The giant sloth. The giant kangaroo. All, especially about 15, 20 thousand years ago, right in the Pleistocene, That's had right. gigantic counterparts. They have not died out. I mean, talking. I'm talking about you know like this saber toothed tiger, of course, dire wolf, you no, know, the mammoth. These animals existed. But we have a really hard time, Dave, accepting... At the time, there were even... lions in North America. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. But we have a really hard time accepting or entertaining, like I said, the idea that human beings, homo sapiens, I mean, you know, maybe a subspecies or, or something like that, could be taller than mm -hmm. what we consider now the tallest. Human I think... scale. Yeah, exactly. And that's, where, where, that's, that's the problem. But let us, what, what, what can you tell me about Abraham Lincoln and the Giants? Four score and 20 years ago. Um, there is a speech by former President Abraham Lincoln from 1848 in which he points which is, out... Sorry, which is, which is really quite score. So. <laughs> what was four, that? Four, year, four score and 20 years is actually five score. A score is 20 years, sorry. To... <laughs> well, it's funny because that's what he says. Not 20 years. I'm sorry. <laughs> How, what, well, I want okay. to it. Oh, so is it four score and six years ago or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, in 1848, he points out the existence of giants. The Lincoln family was familiar with the history of many Indian tribes of North America, and they also knew about the finds of giant skeletons in the burial mounds of the Indians. Since that time, almost all physical evidence for the giants had been taken aside or destroyed. Only then could the history of human development be rewritten as desired. Only through a falsified, controlled historical historiography could mankind be put in spiritual chains even more effectively. 
But Michael Tellinger and Jim Vieira, Vieira aren't alone, and more and more alternative explorers are searching for the lost knowledge about the true past of the Earth and the giants. Various sources even report that a few giants have survived to this day in remote areas of the Earth in underground installations and caves. There is an operation report from 2002. That's the year my car was made. According to which US soldiers found <laughs> a living giant in a very remote area of Afghanistan. A whole unit was reported missing. Another patrol was sent out to find the first one. A soldier later described what he saw when he arrived at the other side of a mountain. There was a cave entrance with many loose rocks and a row of bones. The second unit was not close enough to determine what kind of bones were involved, but the bones were also one of their own missing communications devices. Uh, were also... <laughs> I don't know how a bone of a communication device can be, but maybe someone who was carrying one. What happened to your comrades... To avoid ambush, the whole patrol took over, not much later. Then, sorry, the men saw something coming out of the cave that made them freeze. This was a man at least four metres tall, a monster with a red beard and long red hair. One of the soldiers ran stunned towards him and opened fire. Everyone started shooting now, and one screamed, that one should shoot the giant in the face. The giant took several goals. Uh, but it's, Yeah, okay. He took several hits, but stayed, but still stayed on his feet. Eventually, however, he fell over dead, and one of the men on patrol was killed by him, probably by crushing him. A short time later, <laughs> the military helicopter came and threw off a transport net because there were instructions to wrap and transport the giant. This was then also done as follows. The soldier who reported the incident further explained that the white giant had pale skin and six fingers and toes. After debriefing the, of the mission, every soldier involved was ordered to rewrite his mission report so that it no longer contained a giant. This was supposedly... Uh, demanded of the bigwigs. A demand of the bigwigs. My goodness me! So yep. they're covering up what could have been, you know, ground-breaking news, Mackie. Oh, okay. There's, I've, I've seen the story in several uh, in different locations, um, and it's interesting. It's, it's always the red-headed uh, giant that's mentioned. It's always it was killed mm -hmm. and then they're transported away. Uh, it's, it's similar. Look, it's a similar kind of uh, modus operandi you'd have with uh, a UFO crashes. Uh, interestingly enough, where, yes, and you for crashes, it's transported away and everybody has to change their official uh, statement, right? That's that's really, It's there's nothing new here. So, I mean, the process of, of uh, covering this up is, is some is one we're very, very well familiar with, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a, a new way of doing things. Um, mm -hmm. Another special ops soldier in Afghanistan could tell another story about the giant, though. He said that the story of the kill giant was told her on the base. It wasn't until later that he realized that the giant was actually three times the size of an ordinary man. Another special unit was called to pick up the dead giant. The two soldiers who reported on this experience gave an interview to the alternative researcher and author L.A. Marzuli. There was also a pilot who later confirmed the transport of the giant. This pilot had landed in Afghanistan on the U.S. base and was instructed to fly special cargo Absolutely no cameras were allowed. The pilot said it was a dead guy, extremely tall, at least 5'8". Probably you know, more like 15, eh? But the dead man lay rolled up in fetal position on a large wooden pallet, which was also necessary to transport him. He weighed about 500 kilos. Goodness. So, so that's the type, but it must be 15 feet, I guess, 15 yeah. feet, 8 inches. There have been rumors of cannibalistic giants living in caves among the locals in Afghanistan for a long time. But who listens to the locals, right, Dave? <laughs> Seal camp. Seal yes, camp. Yes, that's right. I don't know. Local, what do you know? The soldiers who did not speak 
the local language, understood these rumors as legends, although there had been regular bone finds near cave entrances indicating that something lived in these caves that killed and ate people. Sometimes this happened by chance, but every now and then the giants were also given people as offerings, the locals explained. This cannibalistic race of red-headed giants had probably ruled the whole world once, for there are reports of them also from North and South America, and they still appear in the traditions and folklore of the Indian tribes. The giants had probably become a constant threat to the indigenous tribes and had finally been decided to eradicate them for the good of all. The last giants finally hit the surrounded by the natives. There were fires to smoke them out and kill them. Now, we have, we have a plethora of giant killer stories, Dave, don't we? I mean, mm -hmm. virtually in the fairy tales, in Jack and the Beanstalk and all that, they're all about giant killing. That's what they are. Well, Similar to, to, to the stories of... to let them cohabitate the planet with us, no, right? No, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. It's similar to the dragon killing. I mean, we've got, you know, stories and stories of, of dragon Dang slayers. Dragons, that's right. St. George, for example, like the, if you're familiar with that particular saint, he, he was one of the most famous dragon slayers in, in Anglo-Saxon history. Um, but yeah, giant slayers. All over in German, in German folklore, the fairy tales abound, like we have uh, discussed with you earlier. Those who dared to storm out of the caves were the victims of retaliatory attacks, for these giants had killed a large number of people. But there are also reports from Corey Good, a former member of a secret space program, that the leaders and members of the royal cast of giants had laid down in so-called stasis chambers, in which they could survive thousands of years in deep sleep. I once again like you to think back to the Anunnaki and the Sumerian texts as well as pictograms and pictures that are left off from me. So if you put it all together, if you, no, no, this, this, uh, tinfoil heads on, right? We warned you. That's if right. you put it all together, it is no longer, it is no longer, it, it is no longer a completely insane proposition because if we stipulate that thousands, and in fact, probably 15 to 20,000 years ago, maybe longer, there existed much advanced knowledge and civilizations and even longer, uh, you know, further back in history. In fact, we, last week we spoke to you about a nuclear exchange on Mars 300 million years ago, which scientists now think is a possibility. So forget the human scale, forget where we are in the universe, forget this particular time. It is uh, most, well, it's important because you're here, of course, but it is actually completely unimportant in many ways. Many things have gone before this time. Many things have happened before we ever came along and and to to ignore that or deny the even even the possibility is is the greatest intellectual crime that could be committed. I'm not saying you have to subscribe to all of us and say, oh yeah, that's what happened. This is the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, let's keep an open mind and this not dismiss out of hand something that seems to have some merit at least at least to investigate. Right. So that's just, that's just my little. Uh, input there. Now, they should stay there until the time of their return had come, which is today. After that, they should take up their old role on the earth again, but is this going to happen? All right. It is written in the Bible that God wiped the evil giants from the earth by the flood. Yes, that's true. That is true. He killed not just the giants, not just the watchers, not just the Igigi, he killed the Adamo as well, mm -hmm. because we are not the children of Adam and Eve. Those were killed in the flood. We are the children of the children of Adam and Eve that came after the flood. That's us. We came after the flood, right? Not, not, no, we're not the children of Adam and Eve. I'm, I'm sorry to disabuse you of that illusion. We are not. The soldiers have the opinion that the history of the giants is concealed because giants do not fit into the Darwinian evolutionary theory. Well, they do, actually. And also confirm the events of the Bible, which is also a bad thing, right? This is desired by certain powerful and influential circles. Evidence of the existence of giants is a great danger to the established um, school of Darwinism and the false historical of the world. It is still claimed today that human evolution has been an uninterrupted development pattern for hundreds of thousands of years, never disturbed by any other species. Well, we know that that is complete nonsense, of course, right? We know that there were many, many, many times we interbred with other branches mm -hmm. of the Homo sapiens tree. Okay. Um, now, it, it, oh, yeah. 
you got hot look. It's all there. Dennis Hogan, Francis, it's all there. Um, it is not time to bring to light all the evidence. I agree. Right? And find out what has been hidden so far. More and more whistleblowers and eyewitnesses have the courage to openly report on their experiences. And so it's not possible to put the puzzle together and finally unravel the secret history of the Earth and humanity. Um, there's, there's, there's a massive um, interest, Dave, a spike in interest, I think, um, around the world in, in these phenomena. And you find that popular culture has picked up on it. There's, there's shows like Strange Evidence, uh, UFO Encounters. I mean, I mean, there's, there's the History Channel themselves that bring out Ancient Aliens, for example, or the or Project Blue Book. So, so the, 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 the appetite for this information is there. And I think it's more than simply a Ripley's Believe in What type of approach. Oh, this is some crazy stuff you might find entertaining for a few moments. I think this is much deeper. I think the interest that people have goes a lot deeper because now we have video surveillance. There's an excellent show. If you can watch it, please do go ahead. It's called uh, Strange Evidence, I think. It's in, the, it's in its third season. And it looks at really strange video footage from all around the world, Dave. Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff you might have seen on Facebook, you might have seen on YouTube, but they bring it together in a, in a fairly, um, I guess, easily consumable and digestible format. And and some of the footage that I've seen on there, you can always argue it's all fake. Okay, well, if you do that, then we don't have to talk any further. But but some of the footage, if it's real, you, you have to shake your head and go, what is going on? What What is that? It, it, it is, it, if, I mean, they talk to scientists, and, which, which is what I like about it, Dave. You know, it's, it's great. They, they bring in scientists and say, look, what, what do you think? And the scientists go, you know what? I have no idea. <laughs> okay? My kind of scientist. Okay? Admitting something unknowing or unknown or unknowable. And that's, that's fantastic science. But, Dave, it, it is astounding how many strange things are actually happening in the world all the time. I know. Right? And we just... We just go on living, yeah, whatever. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry. No, it's all good. Isn't it strange? I mean, look, it is. Your life is is right, right with these. I mean, this this one story you told me. I don't want to repeat it. It's your story. I don't want you to mention it either. But this one story you told me, I was just blown away because look, I know you, and I know, and look, I know Dave, guys. I don't know. I've known him for a long time now. We you know, we spent time together. We work together, and. If Dave tells me he experienced something or saw, saw something, then I know that Dave believes he saw or experienced something, right? Mm -hmm. I know he does. He, he, he would not put me on. There's no point for it anyway. Like, who cares, right? He, he doesn't have anything to gain by telling me something and go, you know, that's amazing. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ambivalent. But because I know this about him, what he does tell me uh, carries a lot more weight that way then. Right, so, so these experiences are real, and I speak to other people apart from Dave, and they had strange experiences, and, and they said, "Oh, I've never really told anyone because they don't want to talk about it, because it's just not." I mean, I mean, either it happened, and then the world is not the way you think it is, or it didn't happen, and you imagine it, which means you're insane. <laughs> okay, so these are your two options: either something is wrong with the world, or let me rephrase that: something is not quite the way we were told the world is, or you're insane. Two options. The world isn't the way we think it is, or insanity. I, I opt for the world maybe being different <laughs> to what I was taught in school is, right? Because I've had experiences. And I bet all of you out there had experiences which you dismissed. And I'm, I'm just going to mention a really simple one, the commonplace, deja vu, right? Ah, yes, it's, it's explained away with, you know, micro lapses in, in, in memory and in false memory and, you know, in projections and the processing of memory and all that stuff, right? Well, you know what? For some of that, that might be true. But other cases of deja vu are a lot more frightening. Especially, especially as when it, as, as it happens to you, in your head, you go, this is going to happen, and then that's going to happen. How is that faulty processing of memory is what I want to know. That's right. That you can verbatim repeat and know in your head what's going to happen before it happens, right? But it's just nuts. Crazy. Oh. Because uh, just the deja vu part, it's like this. It's like when uh, in Groundhog Day, when he says, you know, in, in twenty seconds' time, someone's going to drop some dishes, yeah, in the kitchen. Yep. That's that's what it's like. Yes. And when it happens, yes. you go, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. 
it isn't like yep. it happened. Your brain somehow misrouted that information until it got to until it got to you. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And that's what I, I've really enjoyed. And Mecky, our biggest argument for, for Deja Vu was that the big farmer was asked to investigate how to initiate Deja Vu chemically and then how to prevent it. Because yep. yep. if it wasn't real, why would you even talk to the to big farmer about it? There you go. Why would you? Exactly. For me, it's the same as is it chapter thirteen in the firefighter's guide in in the US. It talks of crashed alien craft and what to what do. What do you it. do? Now, if it wasn't real, why have why even have the section? Yeah, because they don't they don't have a section for what happens if a, if a great flying spaghetti monster crashes out of the sky. Oh, those spaghetti monsters! You got to watch out for them. But no, the, no, 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 no. But, but I don't want to be. Uh, you're not being flippant. This is a serious point. Yeah, no, you, because you are. the thing is, you're, this, you're being this, truthful here. Yeah, if if yeah. big spaghetti monsters existed, then there'd be a piece for it. There'd be a chapter for it. Yeah, yeah. But but likelihood of of a big flying spaghetti monster in the sky, uh, you know, falling to the earth, existing in the first place, very slim, very slim. So. So you won't find a response in the firefighters' uh, 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 code book. You, you just won't. It's not there. However, however, a, a, a UFO. And let's let's be clear here. What does UFO stand for? Unidentified flying object. That's what it means. Yeah. That's what it means. Nothing else. It doesn't mean it's an alien spacecraft or time machine or interdimensional travel. Mm -hmm. It's an unidentified flying object. Okay. And I'm not saying it's this or it's that. Clearly. Clearly. Serious enough and often enough happening that is <laughs> to warrant a chapter in the fireman's response book. That's right. Right? Yeah. So let's be clear about what we're talking about here. Right? Uh, it's just you know, you, you know, I I, I, I I'm disappointed with, with human beings all the time, Dave. I am I'm I am I'm, 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 I hear you. Right? And um uh, what are you gonna do? It's 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 tiring, it's it's uh, you talk and you meet a lot of good people, you have a lot of good conversations, but ultimately you have to ask yourself, how much more energy can you possibly invest in this, right? And then you see a new thing and you go, okay, it gives you more energy. So for me, there's, there's still quite a bit of life left, but it, it's just, it's just you, you, you still beat people over the head with the information, right? I feel like the guy in, um, in They Live, I don't oh, know if you yes. saw that movie. Mm -hmm. But that's a beautiful scene. So he found these glasses. This is a short synopsis. And the glasses allow allow him to the sunglasses allow him to see the real world. Great movie. Love it. Love the movie. Love the movie. Um, with John Carpenter movie. And so he sees the world as it really is you know, with these sunglasses. I mean, it's, it's it's quite different to to what he's been taught and what everybody else sees. And and so he, he finds a whole box of these sunglasses. In fact, he wants his friend from the construction site to also put them on. But his friends said, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to glasses. Are you crazy? You like me crazy? I don't want to be crazy like you. So they, there's this massive fight they get into. Like, this is like a you know, big fight, big fight scene in the movie. And, and um, he, he doesn't manage to get the glasses on him, right? But eventually he, he, does, he does get to put the glasses on his friend, that is, and they, they work together to, to um, rid the world of evil as a boy. But the point is, that's how I feel. I'm, I'm, like I'm, you're fighting with these people every day. To put on the glasses to see the world for what it really is, but but nobody. I mean, you could if you wanted to. I mean, just just open your eyes, right? And you know, I, I hate to quote the Bible. Oh, actually, I don't. I do it all the time, so I don't even hate it. <laughs> um, Jesus said. Jesus said. What would Jesus do? Jesus said. <laughs> he said, uh, "You live, you live uh, uh, amongst, uh, I think, uh, a kind of people that has eyes but cannot see, and ears but cannot hear." Mm. And that's exactly true. That's us. That's yeah. we, 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 we have eyes, but we don't see, and we have ears, but we do not hear. It sounds like the problem but, yeah. the truth movement has all the time. Because people, <laughs> Becky, just like in They Live, everyone is conditioned already to believe the narrative, whatever it is. It doesn't even matter what it is. It not even, if it's, even if they question whether it's true, they still believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's Slightly. easier. You know? But it's, it, look, I understand it, Dave. It's, it's scary. It is scary to... to to believe something else, to 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 in fact accept that what you know could all 
You're wrong. That's a scary proposition. That is, that is the point. That's the point right there. And I know I've got friends who who refuse to um, they refuse to let themselves out of the box, though the box mm -hmm. has no more sides. It's their no. own panopticon. They refuse to want to leave because they don't want to know the truth. They're happy with what yeah. they know now, and and they've formed a life in there, and they're completely content yeah. not to know. Yeah. And, and, oh, I know, but what is it, Mickey? I'm going to interview you just for one sec. What is it like ah, when, sure. when when you see that person and that person says those phrase, that phrase in whatever form to you? How how do you how do you cope with it? Oh, look, it's different in every situation, right? And, and the problem, of course, is that everybody has got a different kind of knowledge background, and, and you can't assume that everybody has got the same knowledge background that you have. That's, that's, that's right. a big, and that's that's that's, and that's why I agreed with Dave to do the show, because for me it was a, it was a great way to communicate, but not only communicate, but also then record and have a record, mm -hmm. right? Have a record of of of, uh, of some substance to point back to and say, look, if you're really interested in this. Because I don't have five hours right now to talk to you about it. But if you're really interested, then go and look at this or talk about that. That's right. You know, or you should read this or listen to uh, one of our shows. So, so it's it's um it's I understand because the thing is I can you can judge it, and after many many years of doing this, you don't push too hard with people that are fragile. Yeah, you don't because yeah, they're, because they're, they're fragile. Is, the term is, fragile is it's mentally, a terrifying thing. It is terrifying, and it can destroy a person. Because they get, yeah. they begin and, and to you'd be worry surprised how many people are actually. Mm. Yeah, go on. It's the it's the same as the panic. Yeah, and, that, and you'd be surprised this, how many people are fragile that way. Yeah, and look, if you threw someone into the deep end of a pool and they were incapable of swimming, they may not survive it. Like it's where yeah. how we've gotten to this point is by walking a very, uh, you know, an undulating coast into deeper yeah. water, and so we didn't. We didn't arrive where we're going to put them, and they have to make their own journey. That's the hardest thing that I found. Yeah, that's right. And look, that's that's the truth. And, and so you take a step back and go, oh, "Look, you know, we'll we'll talk about something else." Or, but if the person is it seems to be mentally robust and and, mm -hmm. and, um, and it might be able to hold two opposing views in their mind at the same time, yes, then then you can go ahead and you can start talking, right? And but you have to understand what their level of interest is and what their area of interest is, right? So where where do they hook into the story? Because all the researchers that we've interviewed, that we've contact with, even ourselves, come from different um, different areas. I mean, Lloyd Pye came in via the um, well, it's called the Bigfoot era, or yeah. oh, arena, right? Bigfoot, the Dave. Mm -hmm. Comes from yeah, hominids. Dave comes from the experiencer angle. I come from the ancient civilization uh, angle, right? Mm. And that's why that's what piqued my interest. And others have different interests, right? It's it's it's, it's a, it could be anything. I mean, I mean, uh, Jim Morris was a reporter, and he he investigated the JFK assassination in depth, and that's how he got sucked into it, I guess, <laughs> more or less, right? Yeah. So um, what was the what was our first guest, Mickey? Jose Escamilla. Jose. Once again, good, yeah, uh, rest yeah. in peace to all of these wonderful yeah. people. Um, he said he was in a band, yeah, and he had an right. encounter. Yeah, right. changed so, his could... changed his entire perspective on everything. Yeah, absolutely. So look, that's really the point, right? So, so, you come from... so if you ask me what to do, and that what I do is, so I, I you have to judge the situation. You really do. I mean, how much do they really want to know? Um, because I talk to people a lot and, and all over the place, all over the world, and I tell them about the radio show, and, and they go, oh, really, tell us more. And I, I go, okay, well, uh, it, is, it is about this and that. Um, and then you can gauge by their reaction whether or not they, you know, want to hear more or, mm. or they just hear more. <laughs> right? So, it's, it, and you get better at it. You get better at it. But, but, you um, do. You've got you to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Both of us yeah. have learned to be careful yeah. how you don't, communicate with people about don't, it. Don't be don't be an don't be an evangelist or uh, no. yeah, don't, don't 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 be a preacher. I, I when I was younger, oh my goodness. Yeah, um, same likewise. Not not good, right? Because the, you alienate people plus, you know, you you get things wrong 
Oh, too. I mean, I got things wrong, of course. Mm -hmm. And then you know that because we, but you, you you told them the wrong thing with such zeal. <laughs> you know, that's that's what stuck. So I, I suggest to to just just approach it like any other thing. Don't 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 preach. Don't tell people uh, something you don't want to hear. Really, that's 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 my. In fact, for anything that goes for anything that you do. Yeah, true. Um, just 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 have a conversation. And I mean, if there's an interest, I mean, I believe very strongly, Dave, that that. Fate or, or providence or call it whatever you want, kismet, serendipity brings people together. Mm -hmm. You you will meet the people that you need, need to meet. You you will have the conversations that you need to have. I strongly believe this. If you leave yourself open to the experience, right? That that's my opinion. Um, but but certainly, uh, I uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't beat people over the head with it. That's <laughs> no. <laughs> It's Better. not effective. I'll say it's not. It's two two things. It's not effective. I I always like to recount the conversations with Mecky and I at any kind of do that we were at together, and specifically dinner a dinner party or something at Mecky's place. <laughs> And yeah. and people, this this was one of the reasons why we we got together for the show, and and it was because we don't realize when we get into a conversation, the eavesdropping capabilities of people who are standing around, or you know, if if there's a group of say five of us and Mecky and I start talking uh, on a specific topic related to this show, now, uh, but back then, the others don't have very much to contribute to it. So they would allow us to continue and it became like watching television. <laughs> Isn't it right, Mackie? It became an entertainment for them because they were hearing things and seeing things, you know, we're talking about things uh, and learning uh, a perspective that they weren't maybe currently aware of or had any inkling to investigate on their own. And then we would hope having experienced that where the group gets larger and, and people become quiet listening to what we talk about, that on the way home, our pure thoughts were that we'd hoped that they'd continue a discussion. <laughs> but what was the, what was the normal case that we came up with, Becky? The normal case, the normal case that went out is when they left our discussion, Oh, but that was it. Then. Like it was like it's like they're tourists, right? Yeah. They, they they had their fill, and then once 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 it was like being on a guided tour through the uh, through the uh, the strange and mysterious, right? Mm -hmm. But do you know that these people are tourists because oh, it's it's oh, it's like the, what they would say. Oh, I'd love to to listen to you. Such interesting stuff, right? Like and like they've said, like entertainment. But then the, you know you walk away and you can just switch it off like a TV show, right? Oh, it's uh, it's no longer. Not understanding that this is actually a reality, right? Um, or we think it's it's a reality uh, because you know, we just walk away from it. But I walked away from it. It's no longer anything I have to worry about. But I was really entertained for the time I was listening to it. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, look, it, it it was a it was an educational experience. It was educational. I, I don't. I hardly ever do this now. I hardly have these conversations anymore. Likewise. Some point because the the thing is the problem is this. So so what I believe now is so far away from what most other people believe. I, I, I don't know how to bridge that gap. I, I don't. I really have no idea. I mean, other than listening to all the shows and you know, hopefully soaking up some information, I have no idea how in a single conversation I could convey to people what I believe without seeming completely insane. Okay? I, I cannot. I cannot do that. And, you know, it's, it's insensitive. It's insensitive to discuss something with someone who isn't ready to hear it. No, I agree. Absolutely. 100%. Right? But, I mean, you must feel similar, I guess. I mean, unless you're in a friendly environment of people that might um, have, have similar, you know, understanding of things or came to the same. And this is the thing, right? This is, this is the, all the researchers that we spoke to. And the, whose books I've read and, and the documentaries you've seen come to a very similar position in the end. No matter where you start, and this is really the point. So this is not us uh, being delusional as, as to what, the, what what might actually be going on. This is this there's a, there's a 
combined communal uh, uh, understanding of what the broad outlines are of the reality we live in. Not only that, it's underscored by cutting-edge science. Mm. Okay, specifically quantum physics. Yes. So this this is this is not something that they just grew on a heap of dung. No offense, Dave. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's very funny. Double. Yeah, I know, right? I really worry <laughs> that my ancestors did for a living. <laughs> They were ducking and weaving, my friend. That's they were ducking they and weaving. <laughs> that's, that's what they did, right? What? Um, no, but but look, uh, it, it is it is that, and 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 um, we 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 try to to give everybody here listening and understanding, and hopefully some tools to to cut through the BS as well. I mean, we've discussed uh, the banking strategies as well. I mean, have a look at what's happening. What 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 argument is being made? Is an argument being is evidence being presented? If it is, great. Is it? I, I want to see all the evidence. That... Uh, yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. Oh, what, my favorite. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> the old shut up clause. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Stop or if it gets, you know, if if it gets it, they silence you for good, right? I mean, that, can, that happens. Right? You get too close to it. I know but, we got um, terrible, it, we got horribly off target here, but um, I know, right? There's only a few <laughs> minutes left, so uh, or a minute left. So I'm just going to say um, hello to Jebear in the chat room, who's popped up. Um, Jebear follows our show with a roundtable um, and his own show, and you should listen to that. And feel free if he invites you to call in, call in, and uh, have some fun discussing the topics that he brings up. I love the music you play, Jair Bear. Thanks, you, also. Um, do, do you know, it's, it just is... It is astonishing that you could live somewhere, anywhere, and doesn't matter who you are and where you are, where you choose to ignore everything around you, and there's the music. Yeah. So, Nate, if you can, come back next week. More Giants! 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 <laughs>